The threat of nuclear disaster is rising steadily as Russia uses the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Europe's largest, to shield its artillery attacks on Ukrainian targets. The Zaporizhia nuclear facility, which is the third largest nuclear power plant in the world, has become a platform for Russian forces to launch attacks at the Ukrainian city of Nikopol and at Ukrainian military positions in the Dnipropetrovsk region, elevating the risks of a nuclear disaster to a new level. U.S. President Donald Trump stressed that negotiations with Russia on a ceasefire must include discussing the status of the Great Station, its deoccupation or at least demilitarization. He was referring to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which has six reactors built in the 1980s and 1990s. Ukraine is attempting to prepare for the worst. One thing it has going for it, the country already has extensive experience in overcoming the consequences of nuclear accident, thanks to having dealt with the biggest nuclear disaster in history, the Chernobyl nuclear disaster of 1986. During the Soviet Union, the National Research Center for Radiation Medicine at the National Academy of Medical Sciences was established in Kyiv. This large building is a multifunctional institution unique in its work. Here, scientific research related to the effects of radiation on the human body is conducted, and at the same time, diagnostics, examination, and treatment of diseases or illnesses caused by radiation exposure are carried out. Scientists at the center, which was built back in the 1990s, created a database of victims of the Chernobyl accident and their children, and they're examined free of charge. The center can detect health deterioration and deviations. In addition, those who work in the Chernobyl zone are examined here. We decided to undergo examinations ourselves. It starts with this device, which measures the presence of radiation on your clothing. <laughs> was it was it friendly? Oh, it, it felt like I was going to be uh, teleported, like a Star Trek. You know. The clean sign means that you can go further. If your clothes are contaminated, the person is undressed, washed in a special solution, and the clothes are destroyed. In our case, the next stage comes: measuring radiation inside the body. This is done in a chamber with walls 20 centimeters thick, made of metal. This is necessary so as not to miss any radiation while the patient is inside. Уникально тем, что мы можем померить минимальную активность цезия в организме человека это раз и увидеть распределение цезия в организме, то есть где он накапливается. Например, бывает так, что при вдыхании радиоактивной пыли Аэрозоли осаждаются, радиоактивные аэрозоли осаждаются в легких, и в этой камере мы можем увидеть распределение накопления цезия в организме. Это фактически спектрометр, гамма-спектрометр. Здесь пробой является человек. Его помещает тоже в защищенный домик, который не пропускает внешнее облучение, и таким образом мы видим только чистую активность которая накоплена в человеке. В этой камере меряется э, содержание цезия в организме, который поступает с пищей. Э, почему цезий? Потому что э, ну, известно, что э, мышцы состоят из белка. В состав белка входит калий. Калий и цезий имеют одну и ту же валентность по химии, единицу. И когда формируется молекула, то из земли э, молекулы при формировании тянут калий для формирования молекул белка. Так? И если есть загрязнение цезии, то э, растение не знает, калий это или цезий, то растение тянет цезий. goodbye to the world, surrounded by 20 centimeters of metal. The procedure lasts 10 minutes. Oh, I feel good. At the finish, we get the result. Yeah, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's really an interesting experience to come out of the chamber like this, to see the door slowly opening. 
Um, but what's interesting is while you're in there, you don't feel necessarily like something is happening. I mean, I felt some kind of vibration, but I think it was probably just my imagination, actually. I didn't see any machines moving, any lights flashing, anything like that. But it, it, for me, it's, it's fascinating because what we're dealing with is radiation, which is absolutely silent, which is absolutely invisible. Значит, в этой табличке видно содержание цезии в организме 163 бикереля и калия 5282. То есть по калию это норма, это даже идеально. А по цезию это небольшое содержание, это обычно такое содержание практически у всех жителей Украины, когда мы меряем содержание цезии, колеблется от 50 до 250 бикерелей. Повышенное считается свыше полутора тысяч. К нам поступали военные, которые были в русском плену. Мы мерили на содержание цезии наших военных. Ну и заодно контроль калия. И как оказалось, после плена, так как их кормили плохо, то содержание калия там практически в организме чуть ли не в два раза ниже нормы. The center has existed for a long time. Despite funding problems, its researchers are doing everything possible to maintain operations at a high level. Yarno Habib, WHO representative in Ukraine, says Ukraine has great potential in this field. But the staff must be renewed, and so must some of the equipment. Today, we are handing over a number of equipment and dosimeters uh, to the center, which is also WHO collaborating center over the last two decades. During the time of war, there have been many humanitarian and development donors who have brought here dosimeters, different equipment. We ensure that all this different type of equipment is available here to train those in public health services and those in hospitals that they know how to use the equipment. It's more than 170 facilities that have received equipment from the Blue Show over the past years. Since the 24th of February 2022 and the Russian Federation invasion, WHO has worked quite widely on chemical, biological and radionuclear threats. This center has been with a critical um, um, knowledge and place since Chernobyl catastrophe that was there 39 years ago. It's a research potential which is here in this center as well, but we need to see also the young generation to come and work here much more. As today we have colleagues coming from Kamenetsky, Rivne and Zaporozhye oblasts to learn and take that knowledge back to their oblasts and to their colleagues. In Ukraine there are dozens of such research centers that combine science with medicine, mostly under the branch Academies of Sciences and the National Academy of Sciences. However, their future depends on funding the ability to attract and train personnel in cooperation with international partners. So I've had the opportunity to get measured for any radioactivity and uh, fortunately I'm safe. Um, but something that we have to be concerned about with the ongoing Russo-Ukrainian war is that there could be an attack on a nuclear power plant at some point. So what the hope is is that there will be young people who will be trained and ready to be prepared for this kind of attack.